Well, the kids are the reason that I wrote you. We do bath time with the boys. When we try to fill a tub, it starts out hot. By the time it's full, it's lukewarm. I just right. can't get a full tub of hot water. All right. Let's see. So you heat the house with steam radiators. We do. Let's check how you make hot water. Sure. This way. So this is the basement, Rich, and here's the boiler. It's a summer day, and it sounds like the burn is firing. All right, let's turn that off so we can talk. All right, so what you've got is a steam boiler that's using it to heat the house, but you're also using it to make hot water for the faucets. Let me take you through sort of how it works. Now, if you can see inside this, it's only half filled with water. So imagine a big lobster pot. The water level's right to about there. So now, thermostat says give me heat upstairs. It comes down, fires the burner. In your case, it's oil fired. It comes in with a flame underneath the lobster pot right here. Now it heats up this water, and over time, this water will all of a sudden turn to steam. And when it does, it fills the top part of the boiler, and now it moves out through these pipes. And it moves right along through the pipes. It's going to push its way up to the radius. There's little vents that are on the radius that'll hiss, right? Now it'll fill those radius with steam. Thermostats should shut off. And now the steam gives off its heat to the room. And the water that's inside, the steam that's inside, turns to water. And now it's called condensate. It comes back through the same pipe all the way to back to the boiler, and it can be reheated. Now, with your system, what they try to do is to actually capitalize, in, in their mind, with the water that's inside the boiler by sticking a tankless. This, see this plate right here? Mm -hmm. This, if you can see behind it, has got copper-finned piping. And it sits immersed inside that boiler water. And the boiler water would heat up the water for your faucets and it would come out through here and come out to, to the faucets. Now, when they first get installed, they work okay. You know, they got finned heat exchangers, but over time, that boiler water can have gunk in it. They get, they get clogged up and it starts to drop off in performance. So they've fallen out of favor for that reason, but also the fact is the way they're controlled. Because this thing leaves the boiler hot all the time. It has a control on it that senses the temperature here that's set for what? 160, I've seen them even up to 200. And that means that boiler sits hot 24-7, 365. That's really like leaving this boiler running all the time on the off chance that you might run faucet water upstairs. Right. Sort of like leaving your car in the driveway running in case you go somewhere, all right? It's wasteful. So. What I could do is I could get a new tankless and replace it and you'd be back to where it was when it was first installed, but you still have the same issues in terms of its performance drop off and its operating costs. What I want to do is actually use the boiler water to heat your faucet water in a different way. All right. Let me show you. All right, Andy, what we're going to install today is an indirect hot water heater. Now, as its name suggests, it's indirect, meaning there's no direct flame. It's not like a gas-fired or oil-fired water heater that's got a burner underneath and a flue passageway. This is really like a giant thermos bottle. It's stainless steel on the inside of the tank, not glass lined steel like a water heater. And if you can see inside it, it's got two inches of insulation around every surface, top and bottom. Now inside it, we're going to have another coil. You know, we had a coil over there. Yep. This one looks like this, and it sits down inside the bottom of the tank. And boiler water is now pumped into this coil, transferring its heat to the larger body of water right here. Think about the difference. You had a boiler over here with a ton of boiler water and a little bit of potable water passing through a coil. And this thing was on all the time, wasting energy to the basement. We're going to reverse that principle. And instead of having the point of transfer be at the boiler, we're going to do it inside the tank. What it gives us is a chance that any of the boiler's temperature that's inside this coil is given up to the larger body of water right here. OK? And it'll heat up that tank beautifully. There's a sensor that sits right here. And when that's satisfied, it's going to shut that boiler off all day versus leaving it on and off all day like you do. You're also going to get a ton of hot water. We're going to be able to fill that tub. Sounds great. All right. Let's get into position and get rolling. We'll start by shutting off the main water line to the boiler. Then we have to pump out the water from the steam system. You get that in. Yep. Pretty clear. Oh, there we go. You can see the brown and dirty water coming out of the boiler. That's part of the reason the system is not as efficient as it once was. Okay, shims. Before making the pipe connections, we'll shim the water tank in place to make sure it's level. Yeah, it's front and back. So that, two and a quarter. Okay. Now it's time to make our copper pipe connection. And that means a lot of measurements, 
cuts and solder. So let's just review where we're at. We've got all of our piping done. Now you remember what that water looked like when we pumped it out of here. Oh, yeah. I'm always worried about the water quality on a steam boiler, particularly if we tie in an indirect like this. So what I did is I took the tapping from right here. You see it's just below the water line. It's not from down low where there's all sorts of sludge. So now the water will come out here. It'll go through this very important part. It's actually a Y strainer. You've got a mesh inside this, so any impurities would settle down here in the sort of the rest area. And if it clogged up, you could just flush it out to protect the pump and everything else. Okay. All right. Here comes boiler water this way. Here's where it goes into that heat exchanger, goes around, and around, and around, and here's a circulator pump right here, a really efficient circulator pump that'll just push that water back to be reheated. A couple more, sh a shutoff valve right here, and a place that we can purge and make sure everything stays clean. So that's the hydronic or the boiler side piping. Okay. Now on the water. Here's where the cold water was that went down to our original tankless. And you can see I've cut a T in right here. Now this cold water comes over right here, goes right down to the bottom of the tank to fill the bottom of the tank. The hot water leaves right from here, from the top of the tank. And between the hot and the cold is a really important safety valve right here. This is called a tempering valve or a thermostatic mixing valve. Now in normal mode, this tank will always be perfect, 120 degrees or whatever. But say something were on, the steam was on too much and it got too hot. What would happen is, the hot water right here, if it got too hot, a little bit of coal would mix with it and guarantee you always had the perfect temperature upstairs for the boys, Sounds okay? Great. All right, so we still have to tell this boiler when to come on. So it has a sensor right here called an aquastat, and that sits in a well right here. Now imagine you're now drawing a bathtub upstairs. Cold water is gonna come in through the bottom as hot water leaves out through the top. And cold water will come like this, come like this, come like this, and ultimately it gets to this point where the sensor is. It'll send a signal from here to a relay, and at that point we'll fire the burner, and we'll bring on that circulator pump to try and keep you in hot water. Just have a little bit more alert. Sounds good. So we've got our sensor and our circulator wired into the central location, the relay. And now with it fully wired, we are ready to go. We got water back on, the tank is full, uh, boiler is all refilled. Now we just flip the switch on. Okay, that'll heat up the water, that'll start to heat up the tank. You'll have hot water in no time. Let me just finish up the wiring. Sounds good. All right, Commander, how'd we do? Hey, Richard, it's amazing. It's <laughs> piping hot. I might even take a bath now. Right.